Okay, June 18, variant 3. Two functions of the alimentary canal are mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. Outline where and how mechanical digestion occurs in the alimentary canal. Mechanical digestion occurs in two areas where in the mouth and in the stomach. How? في المعف عند chewing where the teeth breaks down the food into smaller pieces. In stomach, churning action, the muscles in the wall of the stomach breaks down the food. Okay, we said in the mechanical digestion, the food is broken down from large pieces into small pieces, not molecules. In molecules in the chemical digestion. Enzymes catalyze the reaction of chemical digestion. Table 1.1 gives information about the chemical digestion in three parts of the alimentary canal. We have the mouth, the stomach, and the third part is missing. What is the enzyme in the mouth? Enzyme in the mouth is the amylase, salivary amylase enzyme. It digests starch into a maltose, digests starch into maltose sugar. Okay, and the stomach has a protease enzyme, it is pepsin. Protease, صح, pepsin is also correct. It digests, since it is a protease, it digests proteins into peptides. The third one, the part is missing and the enzyme is missing. The fats digested into fatty acids and glycerol by which enzyme? Lipase enzyme, which works where? It works in the small intestine. Small intestine. Okay. Substances that are absorbed from the alimentary canal may enter the cells, becomes part of the cells. State the storage carbohydrate made from glucose in the liver cell. Gen, il glucose is stored as glycogen. State the type of protein used in the immune system that is produced from amino acids by lymphocytes. Lymphocytes produces antibodies which are made of proteins and they fight the pathogen. The fat is produced from fatty acids and glycerol by cells in the fatty tissue. One function of the layer of fat, layer of fat under the skin is a an insulator, acts as insulation of heat. This is the function. Question 2, figure 2.1 shows the arctic wolf, Canis lupus. These wolves are one of the few mammals adapted to extreme cold. Adapted to extreme cold. State two features that identify them as mammals. Andy, the features visible uh, that identifies them as mammals is the uh, presence of fur and external ears. Presence of fur and external ears. Okay. Arctic wolves show many adaptive features. What is meant by the term adaptive feature? Inherited, it is an inherited functional feature that helps the organisms to survive and reproduce in its environment. Inherited feature, بتساعدهم إن هم يعيشوا, survive and reproduce in the environment. تمام? السؤال اللي بعده, the next question, food is available to animals in the Arctic tundra, the food available is limited, there is a short growing season for plants and in the environmental conditions do not favor high rates of photosynthesis. State three conditions that limit the plant growth rates. Three conditions that limit the plant growth rate. Give a, a, the factors that allows the plant to grow if they are not there the plant will not grow such as the temperature the light intensity and the water supply okay the minerals in the soil um what else anyone has any other idea uh, see he asked a question for six marks six marks arctic wolves are the top carnivores in the food web, they are the top carnivores. Explain why the Arctic wolves is so small. The number is so small in the ecosystem. In this question, there is two parts. The part related to the food web and the energy. And the part related to the population. Why is it small? Okay. 
Why is the population small? Petatil wolves because the energy is lost between trophic levels. Ninety percent is lost while ten percent is transferred. It is lost as heat energy in respiration, movement, excretion. Also, not all parts of the plants are eaten and digested. In addition, to get the six marks, the population decreases because of hunting, lack of food, spread of diseases, climate change. Scanning electron micrograph of vertical section through part of the leaf. State the names of the tissues labeled A and B. A is the upper epidermis. B is the palisade mesophyll uh, tissue. Okay. Cells B and C have large surface area. Explain why it is necessary for functioning of the leaves. B and C and dome large surface area. Why do they have? A large surface area. If a surface area, large surface area will help me in a lot of stuff. It is important for gas exchange to allow diffusion of gases faster in and out of the cell. Also, absorb more light for photosynthesis. Also, more evaporation of water for transpiration. The large surface area will help me in all these processes. Again, why there are many air spaces within the leaf? It is a very similar answer. It allows faster diffusion also, gas exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide for photosynthesis and respiration. I focused more on the gas exchange. I wrote more details. Uh, as the spaces increase, it will take up more gases. So you will have faster diffusion and more gas exchange for photosynthesis and respiration. When water is in short supply, plants will wilt. Uh, what are the two conditions that are likely, more likely to increase the chances of wilting? Ill conditions that increases the chances of wilting. Anything that increases transpiration, yani increases the loss of water from the leaves, uh, will increase the chance of wilting. I can say high temperature, high wind, uh, high light intensity. Uh, low humidity or short water supply. There is no water. Oh, لا, هو, already he said that there is no water. Uh, fa, I want two other chances of wilting. High temperature, low humidity. Explain what happens to the cells of the leaves to cause wilting pressure. If I take care here, I'm talking about the cells of the leaf. The cells itself, not the transpiration process as a whole. It loses water by osmosis down the potential gradient. The vacuole will shrink. It will become flaccid. There is no turgid pressure to push on the cell walls. It also may become plasmolized, where the cell membrane will tear off away from the cell wall. Wilting may look harmful, but it is often a strategy for survival. Suggest the advantages for wilting. Sometimes, sometimes wilting has an advantage because it allows the stomata to close to prevent more water loss, decreases the surface area to the uh, exposed to the sun. So we will decrease the uh, we will decrease further water loss to keep the amount of water in the plant as much as possible. Question four, the endocrine system produces hormones. Define the term hormones. It is a chemical substance produced by a gland carried by blood plasma that affects the activity of specific target organ. Chemical substance produced by gland carried by the blood affects the activity of specific target organ. The response of the human body to danger are coordinated by the nervous and the endocrine system. Figure 4.1 shows a sequence of events that occurs in response to dangerous situation. Hina and the sequence of events that happens when you are exposed to a dangerous situation. Okay. State the tissue in the eye that converts light energy to nerve impulses. Um, a retina, a retina has receptors that detect the light energy, converts it into nerve impulses. 
What is the part of the eye that has the highest concentration of light sensitive cells and gives the most detailed image? Fovea. El fovea, or the yellow spot, it is the part which has the highest amount of light sensitive cells. Okay. Uh, it has the best vision. Okay. What is the type of neuron that conducts impulses from the eye to the brain? Eye. Sensory neuron. Sensory neuron. This is its type. Top, what is the name of this nerve? Uh, the nerve that what state the nerve that contains these neurons that conducts the impulses from the eye to the brain? Nerve. It is the optic nerve. This is the type sensory. The name is the optic nerve. What is the organ labeled P? Extension from going downwards from the brain. This is the spinal cord. Spinal cord. Now, what is the gland named Q? And it is the adrenal gland that secretes adrenaline. Okay, complete uh, the table. Describe the effects of hormones when a person is in a dangerous situation. Okay, the adrenaline for the heart increases the heart rate and force of contraction. For the liver, increases the breakdown of glycogen to glucose. For the lungs, increases breathing rate and depth of breathing. For the eye, increases the diameter of the pupil. Increases the diameter of the pupil. Okay? Explain the advantage of coordinating the response to a dangerous situation using both the nervous and the endocrine system. Eh, the advantage in the stagdem elitnein. Nervous, we el endocrine. Eh, the advantage. What is the advantage? Uh, for this and this, I will write the advantages from the nervous system and the advantages from the endocrine system. The nervous system is fast and it is specific to muscles. Okay, if you want a specific muscle to contract, the impulse will go specific to this muscle. However, the hormonal system has long lasting effects. And it's widespread, which means that it can reach different organs at the same time if I need it. Plants also make hormones. State the name of the hormone made by plants. Plants make auxins, which helps it to grow. Okay, the last question is cancelled because it's the old syllabus. Cancelled. Question 5. State the balanced chemical equation for aerobic respiration. Uh, the balanced chemical equation is the C6H12O6 plus 6 oxygen, which will give me 6 CO2 carbon dioxide plus 6 H2O, which is water. A student investigated the rate of respiration of crickets using a carbon dioxide sensor and a laptop. The sensor was fitted inside an airtight glass jar. The apparatus was set up in a room with a constant temperature of 37 degrees. In this experiment, I was investigating the rate of respiration of crickets. I want to know how fast the respiration is. Using carbon dioxide sensor. When respiration happens, it gives out carbon dioxide. This sensor detects the carbon dioxide to know how fast the respiration is occurring. Constant temperature of 70 degrees, 17 degrees Celsius. Okay. This student found that the concentration of carbon dioxide in the jar, okay, increased by 50 particle per uh, ppm in 120 seconds. The concentration increased by 50 in 120 seconds. So this means that the carbon dioxide that came out was 50 in 120 seconds. Calculate the rate per second. So here I can do it as cross multiplication. 50 parts per million carbon dioxide came out in 120 seconds. Top in one second, how much carbon dioxide? 1 multiplied by 50 divided 120. 50 divided 120. Okay. Uh, it will be 0 0.4116. 
zero point four one one six uh, one six six sorry he wants it to the nearest two significant figures so these are the nearest two significant figures i will write round up it will be zero point forty two uh, the zero at the beginning is not a significant figure after 10 minutes the students opened the jar by removing the sensor they left the jar open for five minutes made sure that the crickets remained in the jar and then they replaced the sensor and took uh, more readings he took the readings and then opened the jar take care the sensor is inside the jar he took the readings for the carbon dioxide and then opened the jar and then he placed the sensor again. Why did he do this? These are living organisms that respire, so they take in oxygen and they give out carbon dioxide. If the jar remained closed, all the oxygen will be finished. This is why I opened it to allow the oxygen to enter for aerobic respiration also remove the carbon dioxide to prevent the death of crickets if the carbon dioxide concentration is high it may cause the death of crickets okay during the investigation the temperature inside the jar increased while the temperature outside remained constant as we said before respiration releases heat energy so the heat energy increases the carbon dioxide gas okay which may also cause greenhouse effect the increased co2 traps more heat energy i have two reasons heat energy is released from respiration also respiration releases carbon dioxide which traps the heat energy causing greenhouse effect we had two marks here so we had to write two points Researchers in Chile also investigated the rate of respiration in crickets. In another country, but they investigated the rate of respiration in crickets. They investigated the effect of temperature and body mass on the rate of respiration. They measured the rate of oxygen consumption with different body masses at different temperatures. They were investigating two different things. In body masses, and different temperatures against a rate of respiration. And this was the results they got. This was the results they got. Okay. This is the um, rate of oxygen at 7 degrees Celsius, 17 degrees Celsius, 27 degrees Celsius. State two conclusions that can be made. And for each support each conclusion with evidence from the graph you have three graphs seven degrees celsius 17 degrees celsius 27 degrees celsius the first conclusion i can say is as the mass increases as the mass increases okay the rate of oxygen consumption increase and you will compare different masses at the same temperature at 20 milligram it was 5.5 while at 60 milligram it was 10.5 for example or 11 this is the first conclusion the second conclusion you can say that as temperature increases the rate of oxygen consumption increases in this case you will take one mass which is 60 milligram for example here it was 5 here it was uh, 12, here it was 27.5, for example, okay, and the unit. As body mass increases, oxygen consumption increases, for example, at 20 milligrams it was 4, while at uh, 4 uh, 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 with the unit, while at 60 milligrams it was this amount and then you will say the other a conclusion the last question figure 6.1 is a half flower drawing of pride of barbados 
Casabellinia, مش عارفة ايه, binomial name. Complete the table by stating the letter from figure 6.1 that indicates the organ where each function occurs. Meiosis. Where does meiosis happen? Meiosis بيحصل في Of course, it happens in the anther, which is C, which produces the pollen grains. The pollen grain comes from the anther and lands on the stigma. Development of seeds. Development of seeds بيحصل inside the ovary. Okay, يبقى I will write E and ovary. Protection of the flower while it is a bud before the flower opens when it still when it has the green leaves covering it. This is the sepals and it is A, which is the small green leaves. Figure 6.2 is a scanning electron micrograph. Some pollen grains and wind pollinated flowers. Please take care. Is he asking about the features of the wind pollinated flower or the wind pollinated pollen grain? Write the formula that would be used to calculate the actual diameter. أول ما شوف actual I will write the rule magnification equals image over actual if I want to get the actual then it is image over magnification the same question actual diameter is 0.082 if you want to convert it to micrometers you will multiply by 1000 so it will be 82 Explain how the pollen grain label J is adapted to insect pollination. The pollen grains for the insect pollinated flowers are sticky and has spikes to stick to the insect's body. They are larger in size compared with that of the wind. The wind pollen grains has to be small and light in order to be carried by the wind. Pollen grain grows tubes which contains haploid male gamete nuclei. One of these male gamete nuclei fuses with the female gamete. State the part of the flower that contains the female gamete. Yes, the female gamete is the part that contains the nucleus with half of the chromosomes. It is in the ovule. What is a haploid nucleus? Haploid nucleus, it is a nucleus containing set of chromosomes one set of chromosomes it has half the number so it has one set of chromosomes okay why is it important for the gametes to be haploid so that after fertilization the number of chromosomes isn't doubled i want the number of chromosomes to return to the normal which is 46 chromosomes